وحيت قلبي وأفراحه وهنا في مساء وصباحه In this chapter, he talks about students' life. For example, family characteristics, students' workload, tutoring, schedule conflicts, academic performance, participation in activities and sports. <laughs> Girls are slightly younger than boys. Students at schools with high performing students tend to be younger than those at schools with middle and low performing students. <laughs> Girls have fewer siblings on average than do boys. This suggests that girls may be more likely to continue to higher levels of schooling if they have fewer siblings to compete with, while boys' education may be priority even in larger families. <laughs> Two percent of students say it takes them less than a half an hour to travel to school. However, students in low educated areas are less likely to report such a rapid trip, and this may discourage them from wanting to go to school because of the long distances they must travel. Boys are more likely than girls to contribute to their own educational expenses. Overall, boys and students from low educated areas have more competing demands on their time than other students. And the problem with this is their full attention won't be towards their education, which may cause them to perform lower than other students. <laughs> Boys appear to be punished for performance more often than girls. Students in low and mid-performing schools appear to be punished more often than students in other schools. This is a problem because they are inserting a fear into the students and may cause the students not to want to return to school from how scared they are. Eighty-eight percent of students report that their class, in fact, does participate in sports. However, girls are less likely to report being offered sports lessons, which shows that sexism still exists in some schools. <laughs> Reports of harassment are highest in single-sex schools and schools with high and mid-performing students. Harassment is a problem because it will cause fear and students will most likely not want to return to school because of the harassment that occurs. Schools can play an important role in helping individual students to resolve their problems. Most schools have social workers available to provide guidance to the students. However, most students cite an academic teacher rather than a social worker as a trusted adult. <laughs> Social workers were asked if they think students' problems stem primarily from home or school. Based on students' answers, most social workers said home. And this is a problem because if a student's home is not safe, the student may feel insecure a number of problems in overall school functioning have been reported, such as harassment, especially by school staff, and a great deal of concern among school staff about poor or aggressive behavior among students at school. One more indication that the environment at some schools may not be very proper for learning. <laughs> Boys appear to be treated worse at school than girls. They report being punished by school staff more often than girls do. Given these findings, it is not surprising why boys are less likely than girls to say they expect to continue on to secondary school.
Girls are usually less punished than boys. However, they feel less supported at school and therefore are less likely to talk to adults with their problems. And when they grow up, they are less likely to have a job because their families do not approve of them working. <laughs>